Hello whiskey lovers, uh, Jock here from Scotch and Folk, uh, ah, well you know where it is, scotchandfolk.nl or, or EU you can say. I want to say a couple of things about Bruchladdy. Um, and I've got a, a couple of beauties of new Bruchladdy's by me, new ones. I want to say something about Bruchladdy itself while I'm at it. And this is the new Isle of Barley, first of all, I'm going to pour a little dram of this for myself. I'll walk up to the camera and, and show you it, the, uh, the new Isle of Barley. There it is, the new Isle of Barley 206, 2006 I mean, Isle of Barley 2006. I'll pour a little bit in my glass and as it's settling into the glass I'll say something about Brook Laddie. Just opened it, haven't tasted it at all yet, this Isle of Barley. So there it goes, a little bit of the Isle of Barley 2006 into the glass and it says on the tin, a lovely big yellow tin, and it says on the tin uh, that Isley uh, is uh, the most fertile of the Hebrides, was once home to, this, to 20 distilleries, etc, etc, and Dunlosset Farm has uh, grown barley for Bruchladdy in 2006 and they've made this beautiful whiskey from it. I'm saying beautiful, well I've not even tasted it, but still, we'll see. Um, I'll just sniff it first. Without any, oh, but it's such a young whiskey, it's only six years old and it's got such a zesty smell to it and lemony. And uh, on the Brugladi website they say it's the glint of summer in a glass. I'll walk up to the, to the, the camera and show you what they mean by this. A glint of summer in the glass. Now isn't that something, eh? A glint of summer in the glass. I'll just taste it as well. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. No. Oh, I can't help it. I just have to say something about the taste first. Such a young and vibrant whiskey. Uh, a lot of lemon is coming through. Uh, real citrus notes and oak, the oakiness and some tannins in the in the sides of my tongue, clawing a little bit to the to the inside and very very fresh whiskey. This is this young Isla Barley, which is the follow up. I'll just show it to you. The other one, the follow up. It is to. The other Isla Barley, which was that one, 2004, 2004 was the other Isla Barley, and um, here we've got the new one. came out uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the first bloggers have just started to say a few things about it. Now, it's a, a quite a... a, a, a a budget whiskey, it's not all that expensive, it retails around uh, mid-30s, euros, that is, I don't know what it will be in pounds, maybe about 30 pounds, something like that, 32 pounds maybe. Beautiful whiskey, and uh, as we can expect from Booth Laddie, in the wonderful packaging, eh? yellow, very, very, very nice indeed, lovely uh, whiskey which I would take as an aperitif, you know, before dinner and just to, you know, but actually awaken hunger in you, a whiskey like this. Lovely. Mmm. While I'm at it, I'd like to say something about Brugladi. As we all know, Brugladi has been sold to Rémy Cointreau. Um, I've seen things on the internet that people have been writing about that, and some people have been saying absurd things, in my mind at least absurd things. People have been saying things like Bruchladi have sold their soul to the devil. Um, somebody else said I cannot sleep at night thinking that Bruchladi has been sold to Rémy Contreau, a French, a big French uh, multinational, French based multinational, let me say it that way. Um, it's like a bad dream. It's like a sick joke. Um, I haven't seen all that much positive 
uh, that people have been writing about it, which I find to be rather a shame. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, get a grip on yourself. You know, what, what on earth is really wrong? What's happening here? Why is this causing so much emotion? And I can come to a couple of conclusions, I think, which I'm only assuming. When you see the, the, uh, the, um, the blogs, people that have been following Brickladdy, people who have been uh, taking Brickladdy very, very serious, and uh, they've been marketing Brickladdy themselves as, uh, and following it because it's got such a... Uh, a renegade attitude, it's got such an attitude of uh, here we are, Brichladi, and um, we're independent and we're one of the last independents. And now they've been sold to a large um, multinational company. And people have felt betrayed, taken it personal, some of them, which is to me a great, it's a wonder in my eyes. I don't know why they take it so personal. For myself, it could have an effect on my very own personal life uh, because uh, I do a lot of work for a distributor that, that, uh, that imports this beautiful whiskey. I'm more or less their brand ambassador in Holland and it, it's me that does the most of the Brugladi tastings in Holland. It could be taken away from that distributor that has it now and given to someone else and that could have an effect on my income. Um, it could mean that I wouldn't be branding the Brugladi in Holland anymore, I wouldn't be associated with it as I am now, and it would go to someone else, and that would have an effect on my life. Um, but even then, that's the way the cookie crumbles, and one must roll with the punches. Someone once wrote, it's more than just a drink. Well, I've got news for you, it's not. It is just a drink. In the great swing of things, now, with the risk of sounding like a Scottish North East Calvinist or something, in the great swing of things, if you look at the news today, there's war in Syria, there are children dying of hunger in certain parts of Africa and Asia and other parts of the, uh, the, the, the Third World, and we are all losing sleep about a luxurious product which costs, for the amount of this one bottle, a family in certain parts of Africa could live like kings for a few months. So I would say my advice to you is quite a moralistic one, get a grip, it's just a drink. But it's a wonderful drink and the people at Brugladi are still the same. And um, the thing that made Brugladi so popular among people was the attitude and, and um, the friendliness and the warmth that you get. So, And that's not going to change, folks. It's going to be the same. Um, the, 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 it would be a terrible thing if Brugladi changed and the quality would get let, less and less, but I don't think it will. I think it wouldn't be in, in Perno, or, or in per, listen to me, Perno, uh, Contros, uh, Remy Contros, uh, interest, it wouldn't be in their interest to un Brugladi Brugladi, if you know what I mean. I think it will still stay, stay the same. And tasting this lovely glint of summer in a glass, it's, it's mm, coming along nicely in this glass, lovely lemony thing. And the thing you would drink in a, on a summer day, I'm actually I'm, I'm filling this indoors, I wanted to do it in the garden but there are Children of the neighbours just now who are having a little water, um, a bath full of water and they're squealing outside. It's 35 degrees Celsius just now in Holland on this day, the 18th of August 2012. So um, the hottest day of this year in, in Holland and the kids are out squealing and enjoying themselves and that would have ruined the... the don't, don't think I'm an old grump, I, 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 I hope they have a great time. It just made, meant that I had to move inside with it, that's all. I'm not complaining at all. Good on them. I hope they enjoy themselves. Rather than do that than play with electronic toys indoors. Lovely Brugladia. Hmm. Now, get to the next Brugladia. 2006, eh? Now, how about this baby, eh? Look at that. A little bit of a different colour. I hope the camera catches it. I hope the white balance of the camera catches it. We're used to different colours from Brugladi. I'll walk up to the camera with this one. 
There we are. It's the 22. The Laddie 22. See that? Brook Laddie 22. I'll just try and show you a different tins to see this, show you the different colour. Here's the Laddie 10. The Laddie 10, see that colour? The colour that we are all used to. And here we are. It's a little bit darker in colour, the tin. It pleases me, pleases my eye. It's a little bit darker. The Laddie 22. Now, old stock of course, being 22 years of age, it means that it's been uh, from before Bruch Laddie was bought over in 2000. Um, 2001. So here we have it. You can see it's opened. I've shared it together with a, a liquor store owner and uh, we both agreed how nice it was, this Laddie 22. Now, there we go, a 22 year old, old school type of it. Oh, and the smell of it is coming straight out. It's not peated at all, folks. It's not un totally unpeated. As this wasn't either, the yellow one, that's unpeated too. But this is... Uh, the delicate floral Bruchladi style, as we know it, I'll leave it out, I'll leave it out, I'm being a little bit restless here, sorry about that. Now, 46% of alcohol, the same as the last one, and in the nose, ah, now we're getting somewhere, the oak, the oak, uh, uh, we've heard Jim McEwen before on the, on, on the videos, Speaking of how uh, whiskey interacts with oak and goes into it and after a number of years the oak comes back and then after a number of years again the spirit comes back again and that's what's happened to this. I mean the oak has probably taken over for a while, take, given it a lot of tannins, made it very dry and then the floral and light spirit has came back into its own again and um, I know it already, I'm talking from experience, I've been tasting it, it's beautiful. Here we go, this 22 year old uh, laddie. Oh, lovely. Mm. Oh, how about that? Oh, my goodness gracious me. It is just so delicate. It's so delicate and nice and sweet. Um, it surprises me the 22 years in an oak barrel. It's American oak, all of it. It hasn't been tampered with in any way, it's not been, maybe they've, they've, they've uh, put it over into other fresher barrels or something, I don't know. But it's not, but by not being tampered with I mean it hasn't had any sherry influence or wine influences as we know that Brooklady sometimes does. And it's, it's such a lovely, beautiful smell, it's, it, it's sticky toffee. Oh, it's, 22 years is... is a very unusual age for a whiskey too. Usually it's a, an 18 or a 21 or a 25. 22 is rather unusual and I think they've just found that it was just about right and it was just it was brought out before the big sale that I was just talking about so it's really a, one of these dynamic bricoladies eh, that um, one of these crazy things that these guys in Ime are getting up to which I hope they'll still be doing and Hopefully, for myself as well, uh, um, the distributor that, that I'm working with uh, still can keep on distributing it in Holland and I can still be its ambassador because I do it with gusto, I just love the stuff. And, um, oh, it's just so nice and sweet this, if only you could smell it and taste it with me, I would uh, enjoy it, I would enjoy to drink it together with someone. Mmm. There they are. Oh, lovely. Mmm. Now, just with a couple of drops of water, it's going on and on. Mmm. And now the dryness is coming through. Eh? I said it wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't have any tannins. But I can taste them now. As it's going on, I can taste the tannins a little bit. The bitterness at the side of the mouth. Werther's original. If that says anything to anyone, now I've got another one to show you before I conclude this video. It's called the Peat Project. But I'm glad you are going to um, 
I walk up to the camera and show it to you. Poor Chad at the Pete Project. There we are. Okay, I can see I've been talking for 15 minutes. I'll do another five, something like that. The Pete Project now has third. The Pete Project is the follow-up to Arturas Moore, the, the former uh, peated Port Charlotte, and Brugladi are, um, have decided that um, the peated whisky from now on will not bear the name of Brugladi, it will bear the name of Port Charlotte or Octomore. And um, so here we are with this Peat Project. Oh, I've put it back in the blinking tin. Into, meant to keep it out. My goodness, it's jumping out at me. I can I can smell it from the glass here. Uh, smoky bacon, folks. Smoky bacon. Oh, smoky bacon with 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 the fat on it. You know. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Like these uh, for the Americans uh, chips you call them, but we uh, potato chips, but in Britain called crisps. Um, Beautiful. You get the crispy. Um, in the southern part of the United States, I've travelled there. Uh, you have crackling houses, and um, uh, I saw them in Louisiana. I went into one once and had some crackling, which is I think I think the the skin and lard of a pig. I'm not sure, but that's what it, it smells. It reminds me of that. The memories of Louisiana are coming back here, smelling this. Uh, this pig skin crackling, as it's called, taste. Mmm. Surpri mm. Surprisingly sweet. There's a sweetness to it, which I can't quite place. Um. Sugar, uh, demerara sugar. Oh, let's see if I have something here. Um, here I have um, from Martinique. I have a uh, sucre de canne. It's it's a syrup of sugar, which I actually use for making cocktails. I have uh, lovely stuff here for making cocktails. I use this as a base for in my shaker for for mojitos. And this uh, this sugar cane uh, syrup basically. It's got a kind of taste of that to it, this uh, this peat project. Um, but of course, the smoky bacon is over, most overpowering and everything. And again, forty six percent alcohol by volume. Now, folks, um, I would like to just counsel you, if I may, and if I may not, switch your video off uh, to really. Stand by Brugladi. Even if we lost Brugladi, the distributor that I work for, I'll still be buying it. I love Brugladi and I've always liked it an awful lot. And I'll still be buying it because this is, this whiskey is uh, top notch, basically. It's absolutely fantastic. I've, I've, a great range of whiskies here I have in front of me. Three whiskies of the vast range that Brugladi already has. The Isla Barley. Now, after the smokiness, I'll taste it. Almost like a whiskey sour, you know, the cocktail, the whiskey sour that you put in the shaker with with a little bit of lime squeezed into it. It's almost like a whiskey sour. It's really, really nice. Very lemony, zesty, young whiskey with a bit of oakiness, sugar and lime. And then the 22-year-old, very, very elegant. Mmm. Very, very, very elegant indeed. The wood coming through after a long, long while, the long finish to it, and the wood coming through later on. First of all, a little bit of vanilla, uh, where there's originals, uh, and um, toffee, fudge like, a creamy whiskey, and then later on the wood, and then as third for today's video, this. Uh, Brugladi, the, or, or as a Port Charlotte, which is which is Brugladi, Port Charlotte, the Pete project, which is an ongoing project. The last one was Anturas Moore, and uh, uh, later on this year, 
there will be a, a PC-10 coming out of Port Charlotte 10. There will also be um, a review by myself, very, very shortly, of uh, the newest Octomore, and I'm coming up to the camera. I've got it here, actually, the absolute very newest, and uh, there you can see it. Um, it's 169 parts per million. Now, where, where is it written? Uh, there you go. 169 parts per million. Can you see that? There you go. 169 parts per million. And uh, this new Optimore, totally unopened up until now. I'm going to compare it to the to the it's the 5.1, and I'm going to compare it to the 5. Point, or the 4.1, which was uh, the predecessor. Now, until the next time, Brugladi lovers and lovers of whiskey all over, please consider this. Brugladi, um, they did what, what would you do if you were in their shoes and you were offered 58 million pounds? Would you say, no, I'll stick to my principles? You don't know. You don't know. I don't know what I would do. One thing I do know for sure, Brugladi is still making fantastic whiskey, and I hope with all of my heart that they'll be still making fantastic whiskey for many years to come, and even if I'm not part of it, I'll still be buying it. And until the next time, folks, from Scotch and Folk, that's uh, www.scotchandfolk.nl Joke Shaw's the name, Whiskey's the game. See you all later. Bye-bye. Slanchy